Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. I'm here to spotlight some of the most exciting film, television, and theater awards contenders working today. Who is in the running? What makes an awards-worthy performance? And how can you, my dear listener, win a statue of your own? We're sitting down for intimate, inspirational interviews with actors and artists to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more. It's an opportunity for some of today's most talented stars to share their craft and career advice, and maybe, just maybe, provide a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. every young actor to know, don't talk about it. Mm. There are so many actors who talk about it. Do it. And do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do it anywhere as long as you keep your motor going. And I was, I take my axe and my pick and my shovel and I mine the system Mm. every day. Where do you even begin? Henry Winkler has been around for a long time, and that's part of why he's a legend. But like the stuff that was coming out of his mouth, I mean this in the greatest possible way. Yeah, I was sitting there like dizzy yeah. from <laughs> from not just like the brilliance of what he was saying, but like the way he was saying it. Like I almost feel like this is an episode. This is a <laughs> podcast episode for um for poetic learners, people who uh, uh, latch on to uh, learning through metaphors. And that's interesting you say that because I told my sister that we'd interviewed Henry Winkler and she uh works with special needs children in the UK and he's done uh a huge amount of work with people with special needs. So I I feel like because he has uh, dyslexia, I think, I believe, um, I think that part of his brain is so enhanced, the visual side. Oh, yeah. And maybe how that combines with the uh, auditory systems, you know. Oh, sure. Um, I thought that was fascinating. So oh, absolutely. I didn't it's realize like, that at the time, but he did so much work with uh, oh, people same. with special needs. Oh, yeah. And I, I think even in the interview, I said, like, you've written this many books. He's like, oh, no, I've written more than twice that amount of books. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, he's an author and a yeah. director and a producer. And he, but it's that, it's, uh, we've got the really interesting angle, too, of if any actor is ever uh, best known for one certain role and ha- kind of, the narrative of how to recover from that is actually yeah. really interesting because mm. when you're on everyone's TV screens, he was the Fonz for anyone who doesn't know Henry Winkler was the Fonz in happy days. He was very candid about saying that that was made him very, very famous. Yeah. And that when it's over, there are many different paths that yeah. one can take. It's all downhill. <laughs> and he, he talked, there was a lot of downhill imagery yes. in his metaphors. And I, I was fascinated to learn about how he avoided the pitfalls of mm. that. And his advice in terms of like, when you've hit it big, maybe too big. And what do you do from that point on? Yeah. And, and he's just been working for decades in all of these different areas. Have you been watching Barry? I have. Oh my God. It's a crazy show. <laughs> it's so freaking good. It's the backstagiest show, yeah. <laughs> but like in this cockeyed, weird, s- tragic, after but hilarious one, way. After episode one, I thought it was a sort of kooky drama <laughs> action. And then episode two, I was like, yeah. no, this is straight up pure farce. <laughs> oh, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. from everything else subsequently, oh I'm like, I don't even know how to categorize this I don't even categorize know. How do you show? categorize it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Bill Hader's performance is the same way. This show is really cynical. Like, yes. this show has got a really cynical view of uh, the working actor's life. This is why it's really, I think, good that we've booked someone from Barry specifically. Because yeah. it's turning uh, Hollywood acting and Hollywood acting classes on its head. It's really making fun of it mercilessly. Yes. Just the simple joke of every monologue in his acting classes from film and yes. from TV and never from theater. And for those who don't know the plot of Barry, it's about a, a hitman 
who gets bit by the acting bug. Basically, he mm. wanders into an acting class, the acting class run by Henry Winkler, and he just falls in love with acting. And you don't think that works as a concept, and it really does. Yeah. And Henry Winkler is genius. He is brilliant. In this show. For those of you who love and use backstage, Barry is a, it's an interesting take on the life of a working actor. Yeah, it's not romanticized at all. <laughs> yeah, it's even a little bit abusive of that lifestyle That's sometimes. That's true, yeah. Can we go back to the start of the interview? Before the oh, interview. Of, oh, of course, of course, of course. What happened? Okay, so <laughs> you were interviewing Gina Rodriguez, last week's guest, yes. guest yes. and schedules overlapped shall we say? Yes. Is it schedules or schedules? I don't even know anymore. Look at you. But they overlapped. And so I was outside waiting for Henry. And, and uh, right. Which, little... which was actually kind of a stressful thing. It was actually kind of a mess. Yeah, we, like, we don't want to have two at once. It's exactly. Scary. Yeah, yeah. And you never quite know who's going to show up when and what They're have very you. busy very people. Good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we go up and uh, the door opens and Gina's dog starts barking at Henry because oh, he's yeah. a stranger coming in the door. Oh, yeah, there's a barking. And so silent dogs throughout the whole interview right yeah. and uh henry and gina meet and then this this <laughs> sort of scene plays out in yeah. front of our very eyes so all of us kind of watching as yeah. i as we like introduce gina rodriguez and henry winkler <laughs> and she even had mentioned that in a project that she was working on they almost cast her mm. uh, cast him as her father i believe and and they are both fans of each other. And I love when two people are fans of each other. Yeah. Then you introduce them. I really want Gina Rodriguez and Henry Winkler to star in like a dog buddy comedy. Yeah. Because yeah, they, they were they were comparing dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And Henry was showing Gina's dog photos Pictures of, of his puppy. <laughs> <laughs> it was and adorable. Gina's, Gina's dog was into it. <laughs> right. And we have photographic evidence of all of this. We do. In fact, if you, if you browse uh, Twitter.com, at in the envelope. Yes. At in the envelope on Twitter is our presence on uh, social media. This is not something we've plugged yet. I n t h e e n v e l o p e. Very good. You might find photos of Gina Rodriguez and Henry Winkler. Yeah. So Henry Winkler, we gotta just roll the tape. Yeah. Roll the tape. This podcast is, of course, brought to you, listeners, by Backstage. Listen, aside from all the great inspiration and tips and all of that stuff we offer for free, like this amazing podcast, Backstage also gives you access to incredible casting calls all over the world. That is why it's the world's number one casting platform. If you're curious or if you're an actor yourself and you really want to jumpstart your career and you're ready to take the advice and the inspiration you've heard here in this very episode and use it... Go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope, E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E. That's, again, 30 days completely free to try Backstage, where you can make a profile, upload a headshot, upload a reel, start browsing the casting notices, and start applying to jobs. Because who knows? Maybe one day, I'll be interviewing you. Again, that's backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope. Henry Winkler has been one of the most beloved presences on and off the small screen for the last almost half century. Born and raised in New York City and earning his theater training at the Yale School of Drama, Henry eventually was launched into superstardom in Gary Marshall's Happy Days, where he starred for years in the role of Arthur Herbert Fonzarelli, aka The Fonz, the coolest guy on TV. He then worked for decades as a director, producer, and author as well as performer, and can now be seen as an acting teacher in HBO's dark comedy, Barry, created by Alec Berg and Bill Hader. Here's our interview with Henry Winkler. Do you know Backstage? Did I you, do. Did you use it? I did. Okay, good. How did you use it? I used it for auditions. Mm -hmm. I used it for um, catching up on what's happening. Brilliant. But this is now, we're talking about 71. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. When I when I came to the city from drama school. Uh-huh. Yeah. You moved back to the city in 71. 71 and a half, sure. 72. And were you, what was the goal? Were you thinking, I want to be I wanted theater? to be a professional actor. I did not have a judgment hmm. about what I was doing. Cool. 
I only wanted to do it and to mm -hmm. be employed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I learned a big lesson because in drama school, when I was in drama school at uh, in New Haven, mm -hmm. where I think one of the best pizzas is called Pepe's. Uh, just a I've, yes, it's a travel tip. Yes, I've been. Yeah. Yes. Oh my, oh my gosh! I, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> when when I was there, and a lot of kids, uh, either from college, they left early, they went to New York, mm. they left drama school early, they went to New York. I thought there will never be a job for me. Everyone is taking they're all taking these jobs. Mm. And not that they're taking it away from me, but just they're getting the jobs and there are none. Mm. And my big lesson at that moment was which I'm very happy to impart to any actor who is listening. Brilliant, that's exactly what we there want. There is always a place for you if you are talented mm -hmm. and if you've prepared mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. and if you are tenacious. Very cool. No yeah. one will ever be able to take a part away never fill all the slots. Mm. There is always a slot for you. That's what I learned. I also learned, you know, when I got to California, and I got to mm. California on September 18th, 1973, at 2.45 in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. But, but who remembers? <laughs> and I had done commercials. Yes. Everybody I went to drama school with said, I don't know how you can do commercials. Oh, really? It goes against our aesthetic grade. Oh, it's just a stigma. Yeah. Still but is. I earned money mm -hmm. doing commercials mm -hmm. that I never had to do anything. I could do plays for free at night oh, cool. because I earned a living. Yeah. So I earned enough money from those commercials to fly to California mm -hmm. and stay a month to see oh. if I could mm, be here. Oh, cool. And um, so I, that's where I learned not to judge. Mm. That a job is a job is a job. Sure, sure. You use everything that you've ever learned in everything that you do. <laughs> and um, I think that's very important. You And you, do you use it all, is it all conscious or is it all subconscious learning that takes both. you to each new role? Okay. It, I, it is both. You use yourself. You use self that you don't know is there. Mm -hmm. You use inspiration. Mm -hmm. Inspiration is instinct. Instinct is comes out of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. But you also use your um, sense of what you know from the world, mm -hmm. what the author has said about you, what people have said about you in the piece. You put it all together. I, I just, I think of um, creating a character as doing a jigsaw puzzle that is all the pieces are blue. Oh. And then you like have to fit it all together mm -hmm. and out of that make a living, breathing human being. Mm. Now, is that true even for auditions? Oh, my God. Auditions are so stressful. I auditioned for Barry. Oh, I my God. I auditioned twice for Barry. Once what? for Bill Hader and once for a Bill Hader and Alec Berg. Alec Berg, yeah. And I... That seems like a, an outrage. I No, I didn't think that. You know what? <laughs> a, a lot of actors say, you know, I, I don't audition because they can see me on tape. They know my work. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, the actor outlasts the executive. Mm-hmm. Mm. So the executive at a network or at a studio, they turn over every 19, 20 months. Mm -hmm. Sure. And they are so frightened. They need to see that you can walk and talk and do whatever it is you're supposed to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. When they see it in your living, breathing self, right. it is so much better than putting yourself on tape. Gotcha. Yeah. So I think auditionings are frightening. Yeah. Auditions are frightening, but necessary. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gotten easier? It has not okay. gotten easier. Yeah. I sat there in those metal chairs. Other oh. actors are looking at me going, why are you here? I said, I'm looking for a job, you? <laughs> Bill walked in, Bill Hader. 
He had his script. He had coffee. He had his phone. Mm. He said, oh, I'll be right with you. I said, oh, relax. <laughs> Feel good in there. Take your time. Yeah. yeah. I walked in. I did the scenes with him and with uh, Sherry Thomas, the casting mm. person. Mm. I made Bill Hader laugh. There you go. Okay. I thought, wow, this is good. I went home. Huh. I didn't hear anything. Oh. Then I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and then you think, oh, well, my name has now slipped off their consciousness. Which happens. I'm yeah. like out of the running. Sure. Get a call from Bill. Come back. Oh. Uh, I've written two scenes. Can I send them to you? Now, this is not an audition. Why don't we just come in and play? Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, I don't want to go again. Oof. The I gauntlet. Mean, oh, gosh. Yeah. Now Alec Berg is there. Uh huh. I've heard a lot about Alec Berg. He doesn't give a lot away. Okay. You know, he's Norwegian. Oh. Oh, very, very, you know, stoic. Sure. Yeah. It does sound really terrifying. I, I, I went back again. Yeah. My son, Max, who is a director. Yes. Who just had a, a movie out. Now I sound like a Jewish mother. But uh, <laughs> the movie is called uh, Flower uh -huh. uh, with uh, Zoe Deutsch. You talk about the uh -huh. It Girl. Mm-hmm. Whoa, has she got power. Mm -hmm. Catherine Hahn is in it. Great. Friend of, the, friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. Great she's person. amazing. Yeah. And she's unbelievable in it. Did I say it was called Flower? Anyway, yes. my son directed <laughs> But he directed me in my audition. Oh, he was there. He was at home. Oh, my gosh. When I got the script, He he. we went over my scenes. Uh -huh. Now, when I got those new scenes weeks and weeks later, mm -hmm. I emailed them to him. Oh, wow. And he directed me on the phone. Huh. And as then, a director. like As, as a, a director. Yeah. And strict. Oh, really? Oh. Strict how? Strict like, Dad, <laughs> there is an exclamation point there. <laughs> Dad, respect the writer. Do okay. not make it up. Respect the writer. Max, okay, okay. Max, I'm, having, I'm doing what I do. <laughs> D Dad, read what's written. Let's do it again. Wow. Slow down. You can speed it up here. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Max. Gotta put you through the ropes. Relax. Yeah. You know how he got the name Max? I literally heard when my wife was pregnant, we knew it was a boy. I literally heard in my mind, get me Max Winkler on the phone. <gasps> oh, just like the name just It just came out of me. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get me Max Winkler on the phone. <laughs> and I, chances are somebody's actually said that now. And now they actually Absolutely. say that. Yeah, for sure. Now he's doing his third film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of blows my mind that you auditioned for this role because- yeah. It does seem tailor-made for you. And I'm, I don't mean that. I hope that comes off as a compliment because it's not... Um... I did not take it as a non-compliment. <laughs> okay. Because um, Gene yeah. is... It's just very fitting that you're here at Backstage's podcast because this is the backstagiest show. Right. Filtered through like a very dark, very cynical filter. But it gets a lot of what acting classes and what the right. struggling acting community is like. So that is one, I've been doing this for 43 years. Yes. Two, people have said that either I should be a rabbi or a teacher. Like early in the process or? Just all throughout. during, yeah. Okay. Bette Midler called me the rabbi <laughs> when, I, when I saw her. Uh -huh. um, then the, it's written with such precision. Oh, yeah. Alec Berg mm -hmm. and Bill Hader together make a circle of brilliance. Oh, yeah. Truly. Yeah. You know? It, yeah, it's wow. like a, and I've said this before, it is like a, uh, a country lake at five in the afternoon with not a ripple. <laughs> it is the perfect time to go water skiing. Okay. Yeah. That's the set of, of Barry. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Have you, is that rare? It, well, I have been very lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Happy Days. Yes. Working with Adam Sandler. Yeah. Oh, right. plenty. Um, working with Mitch Hurwitz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> working with um, the boys on uh, Royal Pains. Mm -hmm. We have a really good time traveling around the world on Better Late Than Never. Mm -hmm. And now... Alec and Bill. You know what? I've left out, but those are the oh, of course. the major 
watermarks. You I find think. your collaborators and you yeah. sync up well, with them. Well, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. Mm. I am, I'm a very lucky human being. Mm. I am grateful. Mm-hmm. I think that life is uh, based on gratitude yes. and tenacity. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, as an actor, you must prepare yourself. You know, there are so many people who think that (laughs) I can be an actor and they kind of slide into California. Yes, specifically, yeah. They get on a show and then you, they're gone. Oh, yeah. You have to prepare yourself so that, uh, I thought of myself Mm. as a um, forest ranger. Mm. And I planted my career, and I wanted it to grow straight and strong for at least seventy-five years. <laughs> okay, was that the that was the vision you had? That was my as goal. Uh huh. At what point was this the goal? How early in age? I came up with the image of the forest ranger when oh. I was twenty-seven. Okay, yeah, you had just mentioned that that was the age where things things took off. That's when I got the fonts. Okay. When I was 27. And you thought, forest ranger, I'm planting these I seeds. I thought, I don't want to be a um, a flash in the pan. Yeah, yeah. Now, hmm. I thought, now, I getting the Fonz, mm-hmm. I was on a show I would for 10 years. Yeah. I was an international star. I got fan mail, 50,000 <laughs> letters a week. Oh I gosh. was on the top of the world. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was going to go from mountaintop gotcha. to mountaintop. I thought I had the system beat. Right. <laughs> I really, I was invited to dinner in 126 countries. Wow, okay. And then I looked down, and there were these gigantic grass stains on my jeans from having slid (laughs) from the mountaintop into the valley. I love these. I really love these metaphors. These are really, really paint the picture. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) I mean, it's no joke. It was such a high peak. You have to come down. I did. Well, I didn't want to. Oh, of course. And then I was depressed. Sure. And then I was psychically damaged because I didn't have... I, from the time I was seven until the the Fonz ended, mm. I had a plan. Mm-hmm. I had a dream. I fulfilled it. Yeah. I ate through brick. Yeah. I wanted to get where I was going. And now I have done it. And then what? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And if you don't have a rudder, if you don't have mm-hmm. a, 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 a destination. Yeah. For me, it hurt me in my brain. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the destination may have to change and evolve. It, yeah, right? and it did. Sure. I became a producer, mm-hmm. which I didn't particularly care for. But mm. out of it came, you know, MacGyver mm-hmm. and sightings. Yeah. Uh, so weird. And then look, and, uh, MacGyver is back, and it was picked up for yeah. its third season in this new... Uh, this new form. New form. Yeah. And directing, where does directing fall into Directing, I never actually got in the director's club. I've directed two feature films. The club. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I I directed an after-school special Mm -hmm. with Scott Baio. Uh-huh. We won uh, an Emmy for it. Yes, that's right. Um, But what do you mean when you you didn't get into the upper echelon? No, I never never Mm. got my career as a director started. Do you think that's because... People think of you as an actor, first and foremost? No, oh. because a lot of directors have been actors first. Sure. Either I'm not good at it or no. something went awry mm-hmm. where I ne- – it was like, you know, what? remember when you uh, – uh, a lawnmower and you had to pull the starting rope? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. With that, with that little rubber end and you, you put it between your fingers and you pulled yeah. until it started? Yeah. I pulled and never got the motor started. Mm, yeah. Mm. I loved it. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I always thought this is the way I see the career. So uh, being a producer is like holding sand in your arms. Mm. You never stop the drip. Sure. Being a director, Gosh. you try to get all that sand into one box. Uh huh. And as an actor, okay. I get to play in the sand. There you Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it sounds like that's what you prefer. It was my beginning, and yes. it is now my my 
one of my most favorite things on the earth mm -hmm. outside of my family and my grandchildren mm -hmm. and our new puppy. Sydney. Yes. <laughs> Brand new. Brand new. She is three weeks <laughs> in adorable. our house. Yeah. A Labradoodle from Virginia. Oh. Yeah. I saw the picture. Yes. Yeah. I can, can verify Chocolate that. Chocolate brown. Cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and getting back to the, the grass stains, of course, it's a peak. The Fonz was such a peak that you had to right. come down from. Right. Is it safe to say that there were? it was depressing? It was, it was finding yeah. that next it, destination. Yes, because... Now I didn't know what I wanted. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to set about producing new... was like a um a a uh, uh, a pin holder, you know, it was like uh, a, a yeah. placeholder. Sure, sure, sure. And um I didn't think I could do it because I'm so dyslexic. I didn't I didn't understand <laughs> the 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 business of producing. Mm. I understood scripts, casting. Yeah. Uh, you know, like that. Yeah, the nitty gritty stuff. Yeah, the editing. I'm very good at editing. Mm -hmm. But the big picture. But the the business picture. The networking no. studios. The no. making deals. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Not good at it. Yeah, interesting. However, yeah, yeah. I knew I became a producer. I did a television movie as a producer. Um, uh, and I I talked. Uh, Burt Lancaster, who was mm. a big movie star sure. in the uh, the fifties and the sixties, mm -hmm. and I talked him into being into the movie. Oh yeah! And when he wow. said yes, that was the day I became a producer. Okay, because that is part of producing. Is yeah. Sometimes you got to convince convincing. an A-lister, convincing anybody to mm. do anything <laughs> at any <It's> moment. Producing. <laughs> Could I use your home? Could we just mm. shoot in front of your store? Uh huh. Uh huh. Could I have more money? Sure. Could I have some money? <laughs> Would you be in my? Yeah. Could you write this better? <sighs> There's a lot of convincing. It's a lot of charm involved. Uh, a lot of charm. Yeah. Interesting. And then you have to be strict because yeah. sometimes we actors get out of line. Well, I was going to say the overlap between acting and producing. It does sound like there's charm involved. There's people. Well, skills. you know what? An actor could not pull any gumph with me mm. because no matter how big they thought they were mm. at that time, mm -hmm. um, even though I couldn't get an acting job, I was getting fan mail from 126 countries, wow. which I could bring to the set and <laughs> <laughs> I and did not. <laughs> I did. What do you not. do with the fan mails? The fan mail. Well, I read after... it all. Did I was really? so scared uh, uh. leaving my apartment that I had it delivered to my house, and I read almost every letter. Was this? And how about this? How about this? I hadn't thought of this in a long time. <laughs> One of the letters that I picked out of this box was from Gina Rodriguez. No, no. <laughs> my mother. <laughs> My mother said, she tell you Dear she... ABC, I think Happy Days is a great show, and that young actor playing Fonzie <sighs> is out of this world in my mother's handwriting. She signed it as herself? Or she did not sign oh, it. Oh, that's so funny. And you she sneakily did this and Shocking. you saw her. You saw the letter. Shocking <laughs> that out of all those thousands of letters. That sounds like you read a lot of them. I did. But did, but was this because the show was over and you were coping? No, this was during the okay, show during also. The show. Okay. Coping, I sat at my desk yeah. in my office at Paramount mm -hmm. and didn't do anything. I was smart enough to know if you don't know what it is you want to do, don't do anything. Mm. Do That's not an take strategy. action until you know without ambivalence mm. what you want. Interesting, because I feel like another route that you could have taken was like, <laughs> you could have gone on like... A years long bender of I was I was on the biggest sitcom ever. I was the biggest star in the sitcom, and I'm going to keep that going, even though I am no longer actually acting in it or no longer yeah, acting I at all. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Right. That you know what? I also realized that no matter how many letters I got from how many countries, I was still short, and short. I still couldn't uh, in stature. <laughs> I had not grown an inch. <laughs> I, I still couldn't do geometry. <laughs> uh -huh. I hadn't gotten any smarter. Well, <laughs> so I mean, I, I wasn't going down that route. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. That was a very smart move, I think, on your part. Yeah. First, to sit there and have the patience of of 
waiting to figure out what that next destination is, right. but also to parlay it into producing into something different. Yeah. Well, my lawyer at the time, Skip Brittenham III, said to me- That's quite a name. Yes. I'm going to start a company mm. for you. And I said, but I have no idea what to do. He said, you will learn. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I in this podcast, we ask so many, you know, we ask a lot about the early career stuff and what you yeah. do when you're in your early auditioning days. But rarely does it come up the idea of, of the flash in the pan success. Right. And then what do you do after right. that? What do you well, do? Well, here's the thing. Um, the, the fear mm. of going for the job, going for the audition, for not knowing what you're doing, for um, yeah. fearing that they're, w what your future is going to be, the fear of that is worse than the actuality. Mm. Because once you know what you want without ambivalence, mm. you literally put one foot in front of the other yeah. and go where you want to go. Mm. There is a path. I think of myself sometimes as mercury. Ooh. And then I fit through the smallest hole in the dike. Okay. To get to the other side yeah. of the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I am not alone. I am not better than, mm. more talented than. Mm. I was directed. I, I mean, directed in that I had intention. Yeah. I prepared myself mm -hmm. and I had um, gratitude yes. for where I was in the moment at the time. That's, I mean, even I, again, it's just admirable that you had gratitude considering the fall from being huge and being a huge Yeah, success. but look what I had just lived. Yeah, you're, you're was, looking back on that with gratitude. Yeah. 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 And I had gratitude doing it. You know, I love the people I was with. Yeah. I learned how to play softball on the set oh, of Happy cool. Days. <laughs> you know, and then because I was on Happy Days, mm -hmm. Adam Sandler put me in the Hanukkah song. Oh, yeah. I called him to thank him for putting me in the Hanukkah song. Oh. And then we and that's he how invited you me to his house oh, wow. when, and I met Brad Pitt there. Oh. Well, I shook hands with Brad Pitt. Okay. That was it. <laughs> And then I was in the water. In all boy. his movies, yeah. And then that's I was how that in happened. four the, more. The song was how he, yeah, you called how, him to thank yeah. him. Wow. And he loved. Happy and you're days. a natural fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. he's a he's a uh, he's just an amazingly darling human yeah. being. Yeah. I mean, he really is. He's just wonderful. so smart. He's in charge of every detail mm -hmm. of what he does. Mm. He looks at every take. Whether he's in the scene or not, uh -huh. he goes to that video village. He studies it. Oh wow! If, if it is not, if you're not close to the comedy that he has in his head, mm. you do it again. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing that fascinates me about comedy in general and and sitcoms in particular is how much of it has to be trial and error. It's trial and error, right? Comedy is you. You've got to put yourself out there. Yeah, take huge risks. You and... cannot be worried about being uh, an ass. Mm -hmm. You you cannot worry about how you look. Oh, interesting. Gosh, because, because the Fonz thought about that all the time. Yes, right. Yeah. But not the Henry trying to figure exactly. out what the Fonz is going to do. Totally, totally. And, you, and because it was in front of a live audience, too, there was a lot of, I'm sure... Getting your footing in that area. Right. Experiment. Now, how out. about this? How about Ron Howard had never acted in front of an audience before, right. but he's been acting since he was three. Mm -hmm. So now he's 19, yeah. and now he is doing it in 1975 in front of a live audience mm -hmm. like a duck to water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was no transition. He was just good at it. Yeah. He seems like he's one of those people who's pretty much just good at everything. Yeah, he like tries. an old, old soul, like. Uh, like Gina. Like Gina. Yeah, totally. And so did you have that? Do, what do you remember about that first season of, of Happy Days? Like, were you? Well, the first season was one camera. We made it like a little movie. Oh, okay. Then mm. they were going to cancel it. Oh. Because remember, there were only three networks and we were 48th out of really? 100. Oh. Yeah. So ooh, I don't know if that we're going to keep this show. pretty low. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty low. So... Hmm. Gary Marshall said, you know what? Let's try it in front of a live audience. I see. Okay. I think that will work. 
And Gary. ABC said, okay, we'll take a shot. Okay. And we did. We went um, and did it, and uh, boom, oh, 10 years. Wow. And by, is it safe to say by season two, you knew the tricks of playing the Fonz and the you, trademarks? You knew, you knew some of it. Mm -hmm. Now, the, also, here's the thing. What happens when the script mm. is not good <gasps> at all? Oh, my gosh. I want to ask this question all the time, and I always feel like it's not an okay question to ask. What happens when the script? Wh yeah, what do you is as an actor do? Silly and stupid, and doesn't have anything. They've written jokes at the expense of the character. Sure. Now oh. what do you do? Yes. You've got to make it come alive. Yes. That audience is coming on Friday at four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You've got to <laughs> work with the writers. Yeah. Now. Uh. Lowell Gans ran the show. Lowell uh -huh. Gans and Babalu Mandel. They wrote Night Shift. Mm -hmm. They wrote Splash. Oh, yeah. Uh, they wrote some of the great comedies yeah. of the uh, 20, 20th and 21st century. Mm -hmm. And they are doctors. Sure, sure. They, the scripts come to them and they fix them. Mm -hmm. So you would go to Lowell Gans. You'd say, hmm, I'm having trouble. Okay. You come in the next day, completely rewritten. Oh. Not the scene, the entire show. Mm, okay. With this emotional spine that is like heaven. Mm. Wow. So you memorized the you memorized the show three times or three and a half times that week. Sure. Depending on how much it has to change. Yeah. But do, but you, doesn't it have to do with you as an actor trusting the writers and having a good relationship with them in order to say, I'm having trouble? You have to yeah. trust the writers. Yeah. And you have to, whether you trust them or not, you must as an actor with, um, with, with um, civility stand mm. up for yourself. Uh, like now, you said, you have to stand up for your character. Too. Stand up for your character. Yeah, if something doesn't make sense. But also, yeah, you're, you're stand up for yourself. Sure. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. A bad director. Okay. Okay. God, this is the best. I've always wanted to ask this stuff, but it always sounds rude to be like, some directors are bad. They what are. What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. Yeah. When you realize the director is taking you down the wrong path completely, mm -hmm. If you are given direction and you know that, that your <laughs> instinct is right, uh -huh. you say, you know what, I thank you for that. Oh, I wish I had thought of that. Oh, my God. Do what you know is right, <laughs> and the director will nine times out of ten go, didn't I tell you? Oh, that's so sneaky. Yeah. Well, it's you, uh, you got to survive, right? Sure. What are you going to do? You're going to go down the wrong path and then stink? up the room <laughs> it's like turning it's like saying no but saying yes it's turning a no into a yes yes it's yeah. turning a no into a yes and yeah. you're saving the director and you're Everyone. saving yourself yeah yeah uh, i i'm all for that yeah interesting and is it safe to say also it sounds like also what you're saying is a writer or a director sometimes it doesn't mean that even a great writer is going to have a bad day or a bad no. Then script. you have another. You have a wonderful conversation. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, you know, I, uh, Ron Howard directed me in uh, Night Shift. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I took home movies of the making of Night Shift. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I have Ron Howard directing me through my camera of eight millimeter home mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. Cool. Gosh. So I said to Ron, "What happens if I did it this way?" And then mm -hmm. Ron would stop for a minute. He would run the movie through his head. Mm. He would then say, well, if you did it this way, I'd probably print it. So then you gotcha. would do it his way. But at least you had a conversation yeah. about it. Gotcha. There are times when you can absolutely um, uh, turn somebody's uh, mind around. Yeah. Like you have to f figure out which battles to pick, sure. I guess. Also. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, but you know, acting is made up of detail. Mm. It is like one grain of of you know when they say the beach is made up of one grain of sand. Mm -hmm. That grain of sand added to all the other grains is mm. the piece and the your character. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to pick a lot of battles. Yeah, and you have to know that it's not all. It doesn't all revolve around you. And also, 
you need to be flexible. Yeah. Very flexible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll get an, an actor who is um, not giving you what you need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you have to pretend that they are. Okay. And act so that as if, as if they are. Mm -hmm. Or a an actor will demand, you know what, I, I can't do this scene if you don't move over here. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, it doesn't really take anything away from you. Okay. It doesn't take anything away from your interpretation if your interpretation is said over here on the left yeah. or over here on the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you go, okay, I can yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go south? I can go south. Right. You want to go north? I can go north. <laughs> It's that flexibility. Yeah. yeah. Flexibility. Yeah. It is um, very important. Mm -hmm. As long as it does not impinge or impede your total vision. Right. I mean, it, it sounds like you have to be in touch with your own values. And maybe the question that you're asking about each conflict with a director or with another actor is, is this impinging on my values in any way? And if it doesn't... And if it doesn't, maybe you just let it go. You yeah. go. You yeah. do it. It's great. No big deal. And if it does, you sometimes have to say, you know, I am so sorry. I'm just... Yeah. I'm not able to do that. <laughs> okay. And you do it with humility. I, and I, have, a, with... I have a need to, and yeah. I need to be here by the kitchen because I need to get that knife because I am going to cut the bread <laughs> as soon as Sadie comes in, uh -huh. the name of my puppy. There you go. <laughs> as soon as Sadie comes in yeah. with the groceries. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to stay here and let's see yeah. how that works. Okay. And, and it is setting up that environment too of just like, especially on a TV show, let's just try this. And and the spirit of let's just try this is where you can let's just new try things. this is very important. Yeah, cool. as a director, mm -hmm. letting an actor try it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As an actor, letting another actor or director try it. Mm. Sometimes, if you 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 don't you don't know exactly what is being said, and you're you you don't know whether or not it's right or wrong to you. You and it's somebody else's vision. Mm. You try it mm -hmm. and. All of a sudden, wow, yeah. that was good. Cool. And it's being open to that. Yes, very yeah. important. And it sounds like all of that can also be applied to an audition, correct? Let's just well, try Well, you know what? It, it, well, uh, here's the thing. You go in to an audition. You're not asked just to fill time and space. You're oh. asked to fill time and space with your yeah. point of view. Mm. And your you, best your, there is no right, there mm -hmm. is no wrong. Mm -hmm. You cannot be perfect. Mm -hmm. You will not be so right. You will be authentically you, mm -hmm. and that will strike somebody's fancy. Hopefully, or eventually. Oh, a lot of the time, if you're in your if you're in your multi audition phase, you just you actors yeah. have to have faith. But let me just say, I, I a lot of times people said in the very beginning, um, you know, mm. that people said no to me. And I thought, okay, I'm not gonna work for you. I'm going down the street. I'm gonna work for them. Okay. I'm not gonna work for you. <laughs> I'm going over here. I'm gonna work for them. Gotcha. And eventually I found them. Yeah. Okay. I found the place where I'm supposed to be. Cool. It's like a relentless optimism, but also I see myself. Oh my God! There goes my bottle of water. Oh my God! I just knocked it over. Oh, okay. I, I'm putting it back up. Right. Um, I see myself as that toy uh, that's like a clown with sand at the bottom, and you punch it, <laughs> and it goes down, and then uh -huh. it, it comes right back to there center. You go. That's yeah. auditioning right there. Yeah. That's handling rejection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they're not really rejecting you. Mm. It's easy to mistake that. It's easy you know, to think that. it's not you. It's mm -hmm. that they have a friend. Yes. There is uh, the son of the sure. uh, n uh, network president. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just not right. Yeah. You're just too not right old, for the Too old, too young, too short, too tall, too whatever. Yeah. It happens. Now, if you let that anger of the rejection mm. seep in, oh. it's going to come out in your next audition. So my advice is to young actors, get an extra pillow okay. and beat the shit out of your bed. <laughs> okay. 
empty your... and do the screaming thing too the screaming into the pillow or... uh, I have not done that okay. I just beat my bed okay. or you know you know some people join a gym but I've actually my car won't drive down a street with a gym on it <laughs> So, that's a good excuse. Yeah, yeah, that's that's out. <laughs> and everyone needs to find their way of of. But you their have to release it. You have yes. to release your anger so mm. that you don't carry it mm-hmm. with you. Yeah, I have never heard that before. The frustration of the last <laughs> rejection. Uh, of course, it's gonna unless it, of course you could let it affect the next one and let it affect it probably negatively. And here it is. You think it's not. Mm-hmm. And it's coming out of every pore. And mm-hmm. we as human beings um, can be at times very perceptive. Yeah. The people sitting there watching the audition are picking up on your... Yeah, even subconsciously. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then it becomes a, a thing of like, God, there's some negative energy there that I don't you really want to work with. That's right. Yeah. Then of course you could get, you could get caught in a perpetual cycle of being each frustration. For me. But I I say you've got to go for the gold. Mm. When I auditioned early on for the Fonz, mm-hmm. which was at the end of my stay in Hollywood, I only had enough money for a month. Okay, oh cool. And I went in, and I did whatever came to my mind, mm. as opposed to. Well, how, how do you want me to read this? Uh, no, do you have it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I beat out all of these other men mm. who I had seen on television. Yeah, actual names. And then there was me. Yeah. And you said that the Fonz was just so different from who you are. He is different. But then I added conditions on that are me. I, I liked mm. his loyalty mm. to his friends. Oh, cool. I thought that was really important. Cool. Do you know? And you got to shape that character. By I got to that. shape the character yeah. because the producers eventually trusted me. Uh, okay. The network trusted me. Gotcha. And is it the kind of thing where you look back on those twists and turns and you and you go, oh, that was the right decision. Oh, that was the right decision. Or are, you, are there regrets as well? I have no regrets. Really? Yeah. That's so wonderful. I have no That's regrets. That's so enviable. I love my life. Yeah. I Ugh. love my life. I dreamt about this. I was mm-hmm. told that I would never be successful, that I was stupid, mm. that I was lazy because I'm dyslexic, mm. that I uh, are not are going to amount to much. Mm. My parents did not want me to be an actor. They wanted me to take over the family business, mm-hmm. which was importing and exporting wood. Mm-hmm. The only wood I was interested in was Hollywood. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. And I know that a lot of the childhood, a lot of childhood for you was a struggle with what you didn't know. My life like began so. at twenty-seven. Yeah, that's really good to hear. For a, I think a lot of aspiring artists, that's good to hear. Yeah, the the first from 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 zero to twenty-seven mm. was pretty much a wash. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But now? Oh your my God. There you are. Yeah. I am having a most wonderful time. That's wonderful. And acting on this show, acting Gene Cousinau, Yeah. <laughs> this drama teacher who is Mashuga. Oh. Crazy. Yeah. He can't He's make it something. in the real world, so he creates this world inside oh, his theater. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Outside, he auditions for the man in back of the line. Mm -hmm. And in the theater, they stand up and applaud for him. Yeah, just by walking in the room. Yeah. It's dark. It's, it's, I have to ask, like, go ahead. Is he based on anyone? Like, does he? Yeah, he's based on teachers that I've had, good and bad. Yeah. Okay. He's based on teachers I've heard about. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about this one teacher in, in LA. Who, you know, his students? What they they work at barista? They of are course. waiters. Yeah. They are, um, you know, sales clerks. Whatever they can do to get a job that will allow them to go on audition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're fighting for their lives. Yeah. He forced them to buy his paintings. His paintings. Oh, come on. Oh, it's that really uncomfortable line—the fine line between a cult. 
Yes. And an acting class. Yes, right. <laughs> and when an acting teacher gets a reputation. Uh -huh. Even if it's a totally fabricated one, like you're saying. Right. Like you, the, yeah. There can be a cult. Yeah. And I, I think it has a lot to do with LA. And there's something about LA that that invites wayward souls to go and to build well, a life for Well, you know why? Because you, 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 the, the American dream mm -hmm. of fortune mm -hmm. is there. Yeah. Go west. Yeah. It's not true. No. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, uh, fortunes are made and lost mm. if you are not prepared. If you don't prepare yourself um, mm -hmm. uh, emotionally, mm -hmm. and which I wasn't. And mm. um, Interesting. just in your craft. Yeah. So for an actor who maybe they're moving to L.A. or maybe they're just trying to choose between an acting class with a good teacher or a bad, what are your thoughts on, I mean, how do you distinguish? You ordered a class if you're open, if, you, if you're instinctual. You will know whether you want to be in this person's presence or mm, not. If you're listening to your instinct. I say that your stomach knows way more than your brain Absolutely. will ever know. Absolutely, yeah. And always listen to your tummy because mm. your, your, your mind will try to second yeah. guess you every time. Sure. You will, you know, you'll talk yourself out of something. Mm -hmm. Your instinct will say, this is the right thing to do. Yeah. This is the right yeah. person to be with. Right. An acting teacher getting in your head and convincing you to buy their paintings is, is if you're really um, listening to really, your gut, you know that's um, wrong. Low. Yeah. And it it happens and it still happens. And Barry is... But it happens in every profession. We're just talking oh, about sure. acting. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I mean, acting is, is just especially people get so starstruck that it's, it's an easy... Right. It's almost like a drug. Right. What, what what is a drug? What is maybe it's fame. Maybe fame. it's acting. I want to get so good at if acting. If fame craft. is a drug, mm -hmm. it will kill you in the same way mm -hmm. that an opioid will. Mm -hmm. You should print that on a T-shirt and sell I'm it. I'm telling of you. Classes. I am telling you. Yeah. On my honor, mm -hmm. if you buy into fame, yeah, you will be cut off at the knees. You can enjoy it. You can enjoy the perks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to a limit. Yeah, yeah. If you think, if you buy in and believe that you are who these all the the public is is thinking you are, mm. you are one dead human being. Sure, you've get, you've given it all away. You have nothing. You've given it away. Yeah, but there's no there there. Mm. Fame yeah. is like walking on cotton, which is really, really soft until it rains. Uh huh. <laughs> and then there is what? It's like you're topping your own metaphors. It's like here's my brilliant metaphor to describe all of acting, and then here's a better one. And that's what this whole interview has been. And I can't thank you enough. It's brilliant. Anyway, continue. <laughs> no, I, it's. Uh, but it is really true. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It really is. If you buy in. You become it, it. It will it will petrify you, like a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to get. You have to want to act. You have to want. Do you have to be in love with the craft? Yes, right, right. And yeah. you know what? I, I now craft is not a dirty word. Oh, craft sure. is not a um, uh, a uh, a word that um, you know is pretentious. Mm. It really is. Acting is an art form. Yes. It is, and when you get it right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it gets you higher than anything I um, have witnessed before. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like that's a good drug. If you're is a good pursue drug. the good acting drug, that is a good drug. <laughs> Yeah. And I'll tell you something. When you are not working, you keep your motor going. Yeah. You form a group and do um, improvs in an apartment somewhere. Sure. Uh, you uh, join a uh, an acting troupe. You do plays for free at uh, St. Clement's Church in the basement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is excellent advice. This is wonderful advice. Um, for those people who... Are exactly like the participants in the acting in Jean's acting class. Right. What I mean, a lot of them have that skewed. Uh oh, they're just looking at fame perspective. A lot of them are 
Barry is a comedy, and a lot of them are, are almost caricatures of people, but there's a lot of reality there, too. Right. But what is, what is your... Do you know what? Barry is based in reality, because oh, the, sure. the, um, Alec Berg and, and, and Bill Hader mm-hmm. uh, both asked the question, okay, so what would really happen? Mm. What would really happen? Uh, okay, so then, then what would happen? And all the writers in the room cool, cool, cool. have to answer the real question, and once the real is established, Mm. you can make it nuts. I see. It's more about nuts, circumstances, and then you as actors almost react to those in a very natural way, in a very logical way. Right. And so you're not going in there like hamming it up. You're responding to No, if you did, because it's so crazy Mm -hmm. in its core, the show, Mm. that if you hammed it up, uh, you you would be a disservice. Yeah, I think we as an audience would be turned off somehow yeah. to something. Something yeah. doesn't feel right. Yeah, it, yeah, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, but it's still so freaking funny. And that that scene where you do the audition of one line, and he, and you say, "I'm going to give you two takes," and you could do two <laughs> takes of the same line. It's funny, but oh my god, was it devastating? Devastating. And that, now here's the ugh. great thing. So I did it, and I did it with Sherry Thomas, the uh, the casting Before you person. The part, uh huh who actually was the casting person on the show. She came in to shoot the oh, off-camera. Funny. okay. And I did it, and then I made that look, and... <sighs> and all you heard was at everybody at Video Village, yeah. they all went, oh. <laughs> so I thought, mm, I might have you done it, it correctly. Yeah, it was I devastating. I might have hit it. That was some really beautiful, quiet acting. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. That's a nice compliment. Well, yeah, I mean, you captured something really real, and I think that well, actors, I've been there exactly. Oh, very much so. You, and I, I, we got that sense. I think that actors everywhere should be watching Barry and should understand that it's a scripted comedy and it's a specific Sunday s- night skewed part. HBO. <laughs> yes, there you go. But it's a it's a skewed. It's well, a see, specific I'm also a, a producer, the... so I've learned oh, you've you got to right. you've got to repeat you things plug over and over. Any again. chance you get, yes. Because people have to hear it three times. Uh-huh. They have to hear HBO 1030 um, Barry. Yep. yep. There you go. Sunday night. Yeah. Sunday night. Because <laughs> Otherwise, they go, you know what? He's on a show. And I just, I can't remember what it was called. The name of the, yeah, yeah, So yeah, you've yeah. got to say Barry, HBO, <laughs> yeah. Sunday night, 1030. You got to do that. <laughs> we'll just play that little clip over and over and over again. There you at go. At the end of this episode. Yeah. Thank you. But what should um, those aspiring actors in that position Watching Barry, what do you want them to keep in mind about the show, maybe, versus the they real They can very, very possibly live their dream mm. if they are prepared, mm-hmm. if they are tenacious, mm. and if they are filled with gratitude. Mm-hmm. I did it because I knew what I wanted, and I went after what I want. And I didn't hurt anybody along the way. Mm -hmm. I want every young actor to know, don't talk about it. Mm. There are so many actors who talk about it. Sure. Do it. Mm. And do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do it anywhere as long as you keep your motor going. And I was, I take my axe and my pick (laughs) and my shovel and I mine the system Mm. every day. Wonderful. Yeah. That's excellent advice. Thank you. You've given me you've given us nothing but excellent advice this whole this whole interview. Well, I look you know what? I if you're listening, I look forward to working with you someday. <gasps> oh what a brilliant note to end on. In the envelope and awards podcast is recorded at Lotus Productions, Hyperbolic Audio, and Big Yellow Duck in New York City, and Soundbox LA, Mark Grau Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Like, rate, subscribe, tell your friends, and follow us on Twitter at In The Envelope. Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and thank you to the team at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. That's Peter Rappaport, Rowan al Khatib, Francis Ramos, Caitlin Watkins, Lauren Rout, Mark Stinson, and especially Casey Howe. 
For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope. <laughs>